You saw us bring this abandoned E46 M3 back to life. Now, let's transform it into a better looking M3. Let's see what happens. Clear coat failure. Oh. They plastic dipped over the convertible top. Oh no. You see all this on the floor? And this right here is my garage. Well, it's drizzling. Uh, oh my god. It looks different. No, no, no. The body of this M3 is in horrible condition. The car's been repainted before, there's patches everywhere, things are peeling, things are cracking. So we're gonna try something new today. We're gonna do something that's an alternative to wrap, also an alternative to paint, and who knows, it might even be reversible. Let's try it out and find out for ourselves. But no matter what you do, you can never escape the prep process. So let's check out this car and see what all we have to do before we start painting. So the product that we're going to be using is called Autoflex. A lot of you guys might not have heard of it, but everybody's heard of Plastidip. So this is just like Plastidip on a whole nother level. It's more of a professional Plastidip with a very high gloss finish, almost like if you were to normally paint and clear coat a car. You can even buff it, you can sand it, you can do all that stuff. But at the end of the day, when you get tired of it, you can peel it off. So we're gonna be trying that out. We've actually had this product for over four years. It was supposed to be used on Selena's LS swap car, but we never got around to it. So we're gonna be trying that out on this convertible. And now we don't know how that's gonna hold up. We don't know how it's gonna peel off. We don't know any of that. So now that this paint is already damaged, we can try it out on here. But the whole Autoflex solution should be quick enough for us to get it ready for the road trip that we have coming up. And if we don't like it, we can always take it off at the end of the road trip. We're trying to make it look better and try to get it on the road and enjoy it. And if it looks good, we'll take more pictures of it and eventually we'll do more stuff to it too. So all over the car, we have this clear coat failure and it also seems like just damaged paint overall when they repainted it, they just didn't do a good prep work. So we're gonna be fixing all this, sanding it down, getting it ready for the coating that we're gonna be applying. We're also gonna have to remove a bunch of this stuff because we are gonna be doing we are gonna be using a paint gun, it's just not real paint. So we're gonna take off all these grills, we're gonna to have to tape everything up, clean everything really well, and prep all these surfaces because they're all super, super rough. The clear coat is peeling here, as well as this whole side. This is the side that peeled the worst when he pressure washed it the first time. So I think what we're gonna do, we're just gonna use like a plastic scraper, peel it the rest of the way as much as we can, that way there's no lines that show up in the Autoflex coating and then we'll have to sand whatever else we can't peel off. Oh, you could definitely tell it's shiny there and matte there. Yeah, I kind of like the matte finish. It doesn't look that bad. And of course, just remove the tail lights, emblems. Door handles. We're gonna leave this trim on, but one thing that the previous owners did, they put this garage door trim as a side skirt extender. So we're probably gonna take that off and get off all that tape and glue whatever's on there. The mirrors are gonna have to stay. They are wobbly, so we're gonna have to do a fix for that as well. Gotta take out the grills, side marker lights, headlights, corner light. We're already missing the emblem, so we actually have to buy one of those. We'll remove this grill as well. We're gonna remove this, because South Carolina, no front license plate required, but the front bumper is probably the worst of everything. So this lip is holding on a cracked and damaged bumper underneath. We've got all this paint peeling from right here, and we're missing the grill. There's all kinds of damage on this. So we're gonna pull this bumper off first and we're gonna to try to fix that and then go from there. Now let's start prepping. We have a long night ahead of us. A really long night. <laughs> what time is it right now? Let's see how long it takes for us to strip it. 10. It's 10 o'clock? Let's exactly get right to it. Exactly 10.05. All right. Even though Autoflex is a peelable paint, I wanted to remove a lot of the easy items to prevent overspray and some of these things were broken and needed to be replaced or repaired anyways.
We also removed the bumper because it was already broken. A lot of the tabs were busted and they had installed self tappers to hold it in place through the fender into the bumper. I was gonna fix all of that before we put it back on. Okay, so let's figure out how this is attached so we can take it off. Oh yeah, there's a screw there. Of course, more self tappers. My goodness. Oh, they also use some type Tape. of adhesive. Yeah. And the side skirt's actually loose right here too, so we we'll have to be careful when we're pulling it off. I hate people that use self tappers, especially for garage door seals. <laughs> Oh, Don't tell me it tore. Yeah. It'll come off though. Try to get it as much with that tape. Oh. It's kind of brittle. So it's kind of hard to take off. Yeah, it's gonna take a while. Awesome. I'll be honest, I didn't think it looked that bad. <laughs> or this might be one of those like eBay extension kits, like universal. So why do people put this? Well, my theory is because it will look lower. Yeah, to make it okay. look lower, extend the side skirts a little bit. Well, that wasn't that bad. Nope, now we gotta get this tape off. And then do the other side. But we'll save you guys- <laughs> The trouble. The time. <laughs> Next, we'll be moving on to fixing that front bumper. So it's the next day and before we can think about anything to do with painting, we have to wash the car. Give it a good clean. And what did you find? I wanted to try some stuff on the top. It seems like they plastic dipped over the convertible top and as soon as I start pressure washing it just starts flaking off. And now before we put the Autoflex on it, I wanted to try with some chemicals, see if we can get all this stuff off. That way we don't have to worry about it later on. Because I mean there is this one gash, that's like the main issue. But I mean, I could just patch that from the inside until we find another top. But I would really like to get all this crud off. That way, every time I wash it, it doesn't just come off. So I'm trying some Goo Gone. And the weather is not cooperating with us. It's, it's raining. Yeah, it's drizzling right now. It's just off and on, off and on. That's Carolina weather. Yeah. If this works, we're going to go get a gallon of Goo Gone. So here's a quick update. I told him not to worry about putting any kind of chemicals on the top because it's spreading a lot of those pieces of paint or plastic dip, whatever it is, all over the car, which will increase the amount of time to prep the car to get it ready for paint. And I told him you're gonna replace the top anyways, so might as well just not even worry about it right now. And we only have a couple of days before we go on our road trips. Oh no, you see all this on the floor? came off the bumper. So, that's not good. Try to sand down pretty much all, you still see some rough spots. I'm not gonna sand it down to bare metal because I, I don't want to put Bondo or primer or anything like that. We have Autoflex primer, it's a high build primer. I'm pretty sure it's gonna fill all this in. So we're gonna find out. I mean, I'm gonna leave some stuff. I'm not trying to make it perfect. If I do that, then it's gonna be a couple of weeks before we do anything. Today's the last day that I want to spend on prep. So I want to just get off the rest of the clear coat that's all damaged using this razor blade, just peeling right off. You can see everywhere. I mean, there's clear coat everywhere. So I'm just peeling the rest of it off, sanding down any of the high spots with like 1500 grit sandpaper. That way it'll still stick, the Autoflex. And then after that, just a quick wash and then we're ready to start masking. Uh, you can see right here, there's still clear coat that didn't peel off. And 
there it goes, completely off. I try to sand it down, that's what I started doing. Wherever the clear coat was just remaining, I tried to sand it to feather in the edge, but it wasn't working, so I had to bust out the razor blade. I even tried a plastic blade, and it would take off little chunks, but the plastic was giving too much, so it would just start bending. That's why I brought out the metal blade. But I'm not too worried about it, and this is plastic, so it's not gonna rust, so we don't have to worry about that either. This bumper was horrible. It took us the longest time for us to prep it properly. It probably would have been easier to just put on a replacement bumper. But maybe next time, when we actually repaint the car permanently, we'll get a new bumper. I decided to remove the door handles as well as a bunch of the trim just to make it easier for us to mask everything. We could have masked a lot of these little items, but it only takes me a few minutes to remove them, so it just made more sense. With all the prep work done with the car, now we have to set up our spray booth. So Warson actually sent us this inflatable spray booth that just hooks up like a bouncy house pretty much. I've never used one of these before, so I'm super excited to see how everything works and hopefully it makes the paint jobs look a lot better. So we're gonna take all the stuff outside, set it up, and then bring the car in and I'll show you guys everything while it's getting set up. So you guys probably can't tell, but it's 95 degrees outside right now. Probably not the smartest idea to be painting today, especially in the sun, but you gotta do what you gotta do. This is our first time using an inflatable paint booth. So we just had to figure out the correct orientation and set everything up before we started inflating it. Now, once we got everything figured out, it was just a matter of hooking up the blowers and letting it do its thing. A few cool things about this paint booth I wanted to mention was the filtration system that it comes with to prevent any overspray from getting out. The mixing room in the back is also pretty cool. And it also has this optional elephant trunk, which is an extra filtration system that uses another fan to suck out the excess overspray. Warsun sent me the elephant trunk filter system, but I wasn't aware that I had to purchase another fan, so we weren't able to use it on this project. But I'll be sure to have it ready for the next project. As you will see, it would have came in handy for this one. Now this booth also had provisions to hook up hanging lights, but we didn't want to risk it. Just in case the blower shut off or there was a random windstorm, you never know in the Carolinas. We did secure the booth, however, with weights that we had, but you could also use sandbags or even just stakes. Welcome to my crib. This was a lot harder than I expected, but we got it up. Now we know what the ins and outs are. This whole time it was taking forever because we had the zippers open to let it air out. And then we had to get a ladder to zip this up because we didn't know we had to do that beforehand. Read the instructions, kids. So this is my bedroom back here. Okay, this supposed to be the mixing room, but I mean, I think it's because we're not on even ground either, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. And this right here is my garage. So now we just have to bring the M3 in and then we still have to do a lot of prep on there because it's gonna get dusty on the way over here and wipe it down, get all my paint stuff set up and we're ready to rock and roll. So this is how the car is looking right now. Uh, it's time to pull it out of the shop and move it over to the spray booth. But so far we taped some stuff up, took most of the parts that we need that need to be taken off. Wow, it looks so small in here. I thought it was going to be a tight squeeze, but it's actually perfect. We even have room here to put some other parts that we took off, like the bumper and the handles and stuff like that. Yay! The car doesn't actually look that bad in the paint booth, but trust me, the paint is still trashed and missing clear coat in a bunch of spots. I am sure most of the remaining clear coat will come off when we peel off the Autoflex in the future. It might actually make it easier for me. But before we started painting, Selena finished masking the car and gave it a final wipe down and tack cloth the whole car to get off any remaining debris.
With Autoflex, you can actually mix up your own color by using the pigments that they sell, as well as any pearls or other pigments you want to add. So we had no idea what color we wanted to go with for the M3, but we had to choose between the brown, orange, or the yellow pigments that we had originally bought. So we decided to use the brown pigment along with some brown and yellow pearls that we already had as well. Now we wanted something unique, and this was definitely that. We didn't know how it was going to look, but we are about to find out. Good brown. I'm gonna throw it all in there. No! Well, now it's chocolate. Well, it's drizzling. Oh my goodness. And we were just about to start painting. <sighs> The Autoflex system has three steps, the primer, base coat, and then the top coat. We used the high build primer since the paint was trashed so that it would get better adhesion and fill in minor imperfections. But then we also had two different base coats. The first was just a pre-tinted white gallon, and then we had a clear gallon that we could mix our own color. Now the final top coat is a high gloss clear coat that has a reducer and activator that all have to be mixed together. So Autoflex has to be sprayed through a HVLP paint gun, the same one that you would use if you're normally painting a car. The primer and the base coat are both sprayed through a 1.8 or 2.0 tip, while the clear coat is sprayed through the traditional 1.3 or 1.4 tip. And I'm just going to be using my Develbus Finish Line paint gun that I've had for several years, along with this Spectrum Quick Paint Cup system, just because we have so many coats to do and it's going to have to be refilled so many times. Remember when you said, oh, we're not going to paint it a poop color? <laughs> <laughs> I stayed eating my words. I should have got a bigger cup. Or two. That's it, that's it. That or what? Yep. Oh, uh, fuck. Nope. Perfect. Let's think about it as... <laughs> Chocolate! Oh my god! That's crazy. It looks different. It looks orange. It looks orange. It's only the first pass. As much as I could have pretended that this was a great experience, it honestly wasn't. We had a lot of issues that we weren't expecting, as well as issues that we could have prevented if we had prepared better. Now this was my first time using the Autoflex system and the main reason we even used it is because we already had the product sitting in our storage. And I wanted to try it out on a car that already had a bad paint job. This M3 was the perfect candidate for us to experiment on. I did not expect the whole process to take as long as it did, mainly because of the amount of coats that we had to put on. I had to make quite a few adjustments to how I was spraying as well as even diluting some of the Autoflex with xylene to make it thinner because of just how fast the Autoflex was drying and how it was atomizing out of the paint gun. The humidity was crazy and the paint booth ventilation just couldn't keep up with the amount of overspray which was drying in the air and falling back on the car. Now this could just be because of how thick the Autoflex product is as well as how hot and humid it was in the air and it could also be just from the product having sat for so long in our storage. Now this along with the random rain that showed up made us work into the night. We started this whole process at 5pm since we wanted the weather to cool down a bit but didn't end up finishing until 2am and that was non-stop painting coat after coat going in and out, mixing everything. We didn't even use the mixing room that was in the paint booth just because it had already got dark. So we had to go back into the shop and use that to use as our mixing room and keep refilling the whole paint cup. Now we decided to leave the car in the booth overnight since it needed time to cure and dry. And we also needed some rest. It's the morning, let's see how it turned out. It's my first time seeing it. Yeah, it looks gold, like a goldish brown. Yeah, the color is very unique. 
I like that. So it's open because she went in already. I haven't went in. No, I didn't go all the way in. I just oh, moved some stuff. so hot in here. Oh, look, bugs got in. Oh, runs. More runs. And a lot of dirt. We should have painted in the dark. But all the dirt, the bugs, everything settled in on the top. We'll talk about this more once we pull it out. The color came out a lot better than I expected. I thought it was going to be more brown, but it's like the yellow pearl that we added made it look a lot golder. I actually really like this color. It's still sticky. That's not good. It should have already been cured. Yeah, it's not cured yet. It should only take an hour before it's dry to the touch. We left the car in the paint booth for a couple more hours in the sun, hoping that it would dry. Now here comes one of our mistakes that messed up the end result even more. When we try to pull the car out of the booth, can you stop laughing? It's not funny. All of our hard work went down the drain. Okay, so when we try to pull the car out of the booth, the car decided to eat the paint booth floor, <laughs> mainly because it was on a slight incline. Now this caused the paint booth to start falling and wreaked havoc on the blowers as well. So our only option was to bring the truck and try to pull it out. We chalked the front wheels on the M3 and started pulling with the truck. But as our luck would have it, the tow strap broke and the M3 decided to self-sabotage. Now luckily, or maybe unluckily, the paint booth stopped the car as the wheel chocks were no match for M power. It was either that or the bushes. <laughs> the bushes, the rest of the land, it would just kept on going. Now we didn't get any of this on film as we were panicking on trying to get the car out of the booth before the booth caved in on it. Our only option was to go and buy a new tow strap, but the damage was already done. Even with all of these issues and mishaps, at the end of the day, I learned quite a few lessons and know what to do next time. Everything is fixable and nothing was damaged beyond repair besides the Autoflex coating. We've got the car back in the shop and out of the paint booth. Oh my goodness, that was such a task that we were not expecting. But hey, life happens. We got through it. We figured it out. But we did damage our Autoflex already. But that's no big deal because we can peel this off whenever we want to. Now, my overall thoughts on the Autoflex system. Our Autoflex that we bought was over four years old, so there could have been issues with the product itself, but it still applied really well for our first time using the product. I was very impressed with it. Now, we did use our inflatable paint booth. Now, that is one thing that I've always wanted because it makes DIY jobs like this so much nicer. You don't have to worry about setting up your own tent or any of that and it has ventilation in it. If you are gonna be painting an entire car, make sure you get the extra ventilation set up. It's also known as the elephant trunk, and that will just make a lot more ventilation in the paint booth itself, which is very, very necessary whenever you're painting a large portion of a car. Now, the inflatable paint booth as it comes is amazing for like, you know, small panels like bumpers, doors, and stuff like that, even hoods, but for a whole car, it just needs a little bit more help. Now, for us, as far as the whole Autoflex system is concerned, it was our first time using this kind of a system, so we did have a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, it did take a lot more coats than I'm used to. Whenever I usually paint any parts or stuff like that, you don't have to put on 10, 15 coats. That just takes a lot longer than you would expect it to, and it's a lot of running back and forth, a lot of opening up the paint booth and letting dirt and debris in. So that's something that you wanna make sure you know of beforehand. Now, another option if you are looking to change the color of your car is wrap. We're currently wrapping our E36 M3, and that's also the first time we're wrapping a car. The reason we didn't go with the wrap on this car was because while we were doing it on our E36, we noticed that our, the paint was peeling up. And that's because our E36 M3 also had bad paint, just like this E46 M3. And we knew that it would just be a hassle trying to get the wrap to look right with you know, a bad base paint coat. But on a more positive note, Make sure you subscribe and come back for the next video where we finish putting this E46 M3 back together with its new wheels, new suspension, and take it on the road trip. It's almost here. I'm so excited. I can't wait.